Good afternoon. This video assumes that you've already read the Aldelo PCI guide and have already configured your network and made a decision on the type of installation you'd like. It also assumes that you've already installed your EDC, your .NET framework, and all other prerequisites to installing the software. Today we're going to simply focus on installing the EDC software and configuring that. So first off, you are going to download your Aldelo EDC from our secure website. Double click on that to start the installation and you may be required to uh, increase your securities in order to allow for the program to install. You'll then be given a window that welcomes you to the install shield. Gives you an option to go through and read the EULA and licensing agreement information here, as well as print the EULA so you can read that. I'm going to go ahead and accept the terms and click Next. It also gives you some installation tips um, for setting up your IAS, for installing the prerequisite installers, for what is included in the EDC installation package, for setting up your auto batching, for making sure your payment server computer is on, for letting EDC notify you of the batch results, and we can go forward. It will then ask you for which folder you'd like to install your EDC on. We're going to go ahead and use the default folder. Which type of installation you're going to use, custom or typical. We're going to choose custom. And in the custom, it'll allow you to install both the client and server components. The client is the user interface options. The server is the web service components. These can be installed on two separate computers for higher security. In our case, for demonstration purposes, I'm going to install them on a single computer. It's then going to give you a summary of your installation. I'm going to click install. And it will run through the installation process. This may take several minutes. When finished, simply click finish. Once you've installed your EDC, you'll need to license your software. Simply launch your DRM client and go to activate license. Enter in the serial number that you'd like to use. And click next. This will come up and uh, give you information about the serial number and where it was registered to. If you have not registered the serial number, it will allow you to fill in this information here and click Next. It will give you some general information about your license. Go ahead and click Activate. Your license is now activated successfully. You can go ahead and exit your DRM, go to the Windows Start, and launch your Aldelo EDC. When you launch your EDC for the first time, you're going to get a setup wizard that walks you through the setup process. This is going to start off with um, validating your installation uh, information, your default web services and your auto batch time that you'd like to set up. You may need to configure this based on your custom configurations. You'll then need to go to the user account and password section where the system's going to help you create uh, user account information here. It is always a good idea to change your administrator password and never use the defaults that are there. For my purposes, I'm gonna create a password here that is a level 7 password. It's going to have letters, numbers, and special characters, and at least seven characters.
like that. You have the option of setting up your email notifications. And if you know your SMTP server information, the required port, your authentication username and password, and the email address you'd like this sent to, this is a great time to go ahead and set this up. You can set up up to three notification uh, recipients uh, right from the screen. In our case, we're going to assume that you have your information for this if you're going to set this up. Otherwise, you can go straight to finish and go to create database. Now, in here, if you've not set up your email notifications, you will be asked, do you wish to set those up? In my case, I'm going to go ahead and click no. The system then is going to see, are your web services correctly set up? And do you currently have the SQL Server that you're trying to connect to? It will then script your database and upon completion of your database file will come up and it'll ask you to start setting up your uh, login information. You will be prompted to log in and please make sure you use the administrator name uh, exactly the way you typed it in before and the login uh, to continue the setup. So in this case I'm going to change this to J. Here and we're going to hit login. When you successfully logged in, you'll be asked to fill out the security answers before you continue. Go ahead and click OK there. And you'll need to provide uh, a pet's name, a mother's maiden uh, name, and information about your first car. You'll then be able to just click Update. It'll uh, ask you to remember these security answers. This will be how you reset your password if you happen to forget it. You'll then be able to go in and type in your password again. And log into your EDC. Your basic database now is set up with your user information. You simply now need to go in and set up your merchant account information. In this case, we're going to be looking at the Sterling edition um, of the system and you're going to go to file and merchant accounts here click new read the information here very carefully this has very important information about setting up your merchant account and that your information must be accurate it also will inform you that our support agents will not assist you in setting up your merchant account information as we will not have access to this information you'll then come in here and set up your merchant account name, whatever that may be. You're going to choose your account type. This is either going to be a primary, a secondary, a gift card account, a debit account, a Canadian debit account, an EBT, or a check processing account. For our purposes, we're going to be setting up a primary gift card account, although the secondary and uh, gift card accounts will function exactly the same. For debit card information, you will need information from your processor separate for that, depending on who your processor is, as well as EBT or check processing. Your merchant service provider, you'll be able to choose that. In this case, Sterling offers three options, a Sterling gateway, a payment gateway, or an NC option. Um, most customers will be using the Sterling gateway, so we're going to be focusing primarily on that. And you'll notice as we chose our gateway, the merchant information options here changed. You'll then choose your business type. Restaurant will allow you to accept gratuities. Retail will not prompt you for gratuity uh, information. It will not allow you to accept uh, gratuities. And Moto, of course, is for mail order, telephone order, and in this case, uh, if you're using e-commerce. We're going to go ahead and set this for restaurant mode. Um, there is no difference in configuration for retail and moto. We're going to make this an active account. We're going to enable our tracing 
and there'd be no other information you'd need. We're not going to simply hide this account. This will be if you're deactivating account and need to uh, to move forward there. And demo mode is only for demonstrations. It should never be used on a computer going into a live uh, situation. This is primarily created for situations where you're going to have a computer you're setting off to uh, a trade show or something of that effect or using in the process of a dealer demonstration computer uh, where you'd like to use the uh, software on a dealer demonstration. It will give you um, demo authorizations for transactions anywhere between $1 and $50 if you use this. Uh, store ID, merchant ID, terminal ID, and security code information will all be provided by your merchant processor. So once you have this, you will just be able to hit save and done here. Um, one last thing I do want to make sure we understand while we're in this screen. Demo mode transactions will not process against your processor. They are local processing only and it will not store any credit card data so any transactions done through this will not be authorized with your processor and they will be at a loss um, if in live mode. So we're going to hit save and done here your EDC is now fully configured and ready to go. Thank you for your time and have a great day.